Good morning all, warm greetings from Turkey. Uh, before I start, uh, I'd like to thank the organizing committee uh, for providing an opportunity uh, to me to present this paper at this conference. Uh, the paper uh, I'll present today is entitled Plagiarism Indicating a Rejuvenation Demand. Uh, with this presentation, I will try to illustrate how history of books can be intertwined with translation history, because there are noticeably overlapping subjects of both areas from my point of view as a translation historiographer. Uh, as the history of books uh, as a research field has its roots in bibliography, it's a thought-provoking academic field translation historians cannot deny due to its interdisciplinary nature. Bibliographical methods are fu fundamental for archival analysis um, and extra textual examination the translation uh, historiographers resort to. My focus will be particularly on indirect translations and the effects of ideological suppression on publishing, uh, which can lead to concealment of the agents of translators and the influence of previous versions, including plagiarized ones. Plagiarized, plagiarized ones. Although indirect translations remained outside uh, of the definition of retranslation, the indivisible character of direct and indirect translations requires the discussion of these two concepts together in terms of the integrity, integrity of translation history. For some translations, use of multiple source texts and earlier versions, regardless of their source language, cause the distinction between direct and indirect translation get blurred. A serious uh, translator will never ignore the previous translations of a source text. However, this reverence can lead the translator to be influenced by the previous versions and thus carries the translation in a very risky uh, mimetic realm, as you see in the you will see in this presentation. Uh, the idea of the core idea of this uh, presentation was first conceived during a translation uh, history project and titled A Descriptive and Critical Look at Retranslation, Retranslated Works in the Ottoman Empire and Republic of Turkey, uh, which uh, I was a member, uh, a researcher uh, in this project. It was conducted between the years 2013 and 2016. Uh, as I said, it was a um, translation history project. Uh, it was also a meta uh, bibliography project because uh, it made use of other, other bibliographies. Researchers conveyed various realms of translation for retranslations in Ottoman and Turkish. My research area was the retranslations of leftist nonfiction books, namely Marxist, socialist, and communist works was retranslated into Turkish. Uh, if you would like to have further information, you can visit the site here. We translation Turkey Bon Edu TR. It's a, there, you will find a living and growing source there because um, uh, researchers still can still contribute to uh, this bibliography. Uh, also, also. Uh, Two volumes uh, were published just afterwards. Uh, afterwards, the, this project was completed. The first one was entitled "Studies from a Retranslation Culture: The Turkish Context," uh, edited by Özlemberk Albertan and Cina Sahir Gürçalar. Uh, if you are curious about the project, the uh, first chapter of this book, the introduction, uh, will give a very clear idea of the uh, project. Later on later on. Uh, I wrote my PhD dissertation uh, I, uh, using the data I gathered during the project. I used the, this data as the uh, literature review and historical analysis part. According to the results of historical analysis, 90 three books by 47 writers were retranslated over 250 times between the years 1921 and 2016. As this study aims to reveal the retranslations, 93 first translations are not included in this uh, number. The catalog consists uh, 357 translations in total. Lenin's were in Turkish uh, had a leading role uh, in this genre with 18 works, 45 translations 
translations were done by Muzaffer Erdos and he was the leading translator. The translators of uh, 12 translations uh, were unknown in the book list. The source language of translations are not stated most of the time. Uh, what was the first start, a spark uh, that uh, interested um, uh, me uh, was an acquisition of plagiarism by Erkin Özal, an indirect translation, retranslation of Lenin's uh, What's to be done in to Turkish by Ferit Burak Aydar was accused of plagiarizing a previous version by Muzaffer Erdos. However, the case seemed to be a reaction to, a, to an ideological change in the target system. Uh, here in this table, uh, you will see all the works, uh, all the translations of uh, what's to be done. Uh, the first one is by Muzaffer Erdos. However, later on, it was revealed that the translation, the translator was uh, someone else, an influential figure in the Turkish Communist Party uh, when the translation was uh, first launched, uh, Mihri Belli himself. Uh, and as you see, the last translation is uh, by Ferit Burak Aydar. And the clash, the clash I mentioned was between the first version, which was reprinted several times, and this last translation. And both of them, both of them were indirect translations, which means they are not done from Russian, but English. Uh, here, here in this um, table, uh, you can see that Muzaffer Erdos uh, is the uh, is the on uh, on the top of the list. Uh, he is the owner of the uh, pub sole publishing house. That's that's why this looks uh, suspicious. Uh, the publisher translator went through a legal case due to this uh, book uh, and sentenced to seven and five years imprisonment, making use of a legal pardon. He was released after he spent one third of of his legal punishment. Indirect retranslations. Um, oh, I think I think uh, for uh, your uh, for you to follow uh, the discussion, I need to clarify uh, the definitions of translation and retranslation, direct and indirect retranslation. This uh, study is based on a deviant case between the translation and indirect translation in the field of leftist nonfiction. It's essential to draw the theoretical borders of these two areas of research. Retranslation is uh, defined as the act or product of uh, translating a previously translated Translated text from the original source language. Although some scholars like Gambia, Koskin, and Palaposki it excludes relay translations from the definitions, definition of retranslations, the controversy doesn't seem to be settled. Indirect uh, translations are done from a mediating uh, language. Uh, James San Andre uh, comments on indirect translation as a subset of retranslation, uh, and on, uh, Andre considers considers indirect translation at the limit of retranslation. Martin Ringmar discusses whether indirect translation is a borderline case or a perfectly normal phenomenon, so common that hardly noted at all. Thus, exclusion of relay translation from the scope of retranslation is an evasive way to simplify and standardize the borders of these two, these two terms. Uh, there's a mistrust of indirect translations, nonetheless, from a target-oriented point, uh, target -oriented point of view, indirect translations can stand out in their own rise as retranslations. From a descriptive translations of retranslations, from a descriptive point of view, the lack or scarcity of works on this field proves the avoidance of the topic. Uh, another, another scholar who tries to destroy taboos against translations from intermediate lang language is Kelly Bosborn. She ironically discusses that indirect translation should not be figured out as a cryptozoological curiosity or a shameful pathology. Likewise, I will, I will argue that indirect uh, translation is a juncture point for translation and history of books, but still an intriguing subject. An indirect translation can even be canonized in special historical context due to the needs of the target culture and translators or publishers as agency and the iconic status of the source text.
Uh, all of which indicates the fact that the grading status allocated to indirect translation is only an illusion and the trials of dividing translation history into direct and indirect translation is a futile effort. Uh, Amaral argues the envir uh, invariance of the definition of retranslation needs to be problematized because easy delineation of the phenomen phenomenon leads to controversies. The core definition of the term, a new translation of a source text that has been translated into the same language needs to be questioned. Amaral questions the limitation of it to, to only one target language, but I will question its limitation to only one source language because he, he, he as he clearly puts forward uh, such a potentially polyglot phenomenon cannot be confined to bilingualism uh, these are the two translations i mentioned uh, the orange one is by soul publications uh, it is um, uh, published under Muzaffer Erdo's name, but later on uh, we learned uh, a Turkish readership. It was uh, done by Mihri Belli, uh, and the other one, the other one uh, is the one who, uh, which, uh, which is uh, accused of plagiarizing uh, Soul Publications versions by Ferit Burak Aydar. Uh, when it comes to the reasons of indirect translations, when the reasons of and the reasons of uh, relay translations are examined, the dominance or prestige of a mediating language is the first and most remarkable uh, underlying reason. In addition, the lack of people who have proficiency in the prof original source language, economic constraints, or the aim to minimize the cost can be listed as a, as a uh, subsequent reason. Uh, at that time, at that time, uh, Russian was in such a state. Moreover, moreover, as uh, Anna Maria uh, Roca Ur Urgari proposes, changes in the um, ideology of target system may trigger new versions of foreign works that have been previously introduced into the uh, target. Uh, system. In the case of retranslation, as in many cases, the retranslators do not deny the previous retranslations. They survey the previous versions regardless of their source languages. Some aspects of uh, the former retranslations can come forth in some parts of the new work as a consequence of the appreciation and reverence which the retranslators show for the previous one, especially when they come from the same ideological or political tradition. But this mimetic attitude always carries the risk of stepping into a risky limbo between imitation and plagiarism. That's a quote from my PhD dissertation. Uh, to pinpoint this blurring of this uh, distinction between new translation and plagiarism and the contentious state of uh, some translations, Mehmet Shahin, Derya Duman and Sabri Gürses define such activities as plagiaristic forms of uh, retranslations, unquote. Uh, and what is what's specific about this case of what's to be uh, done? Uh, a claim of plagiarism was real part, uh, as I told, uh, as I have already stated, and it prom uh, it prompted the study. Erkin Özalp's post on Haberveriyorum.net entitled "What's to be done?" launched by Agora Publishing House is a translation plunder. The moderator of the site, Erkin Özalp, accused the translator Fer Ferit Burak, Burak Aydar and Agora Publishing House of plagiarizing Soul Publications 1968 version from an online PDF version of it. Erkin Özalp accused Agora publications of outright theft and stated that such a theft concerning the classical works of Marxism is beneath the dignity of the left. Uh, Özalp's exhibition was disseminated by other websites. One of them was Istanbul, Med uh, Istanbul Indie Media Independent Media Center that posted Özalp's article with the heading. The publishing house uh, Agora Kitaplu and the translator Aydar defended themselves on several grounds and opposed uh, claim of plagiarism. Later on, um, Sabri Gürses had an interview with, uh, with Özal, the person who came up with the claim of plagiarism. Uh, and Sabri Gürses is the moderator of an online translation studies uh, magazine entitled Çeviri Bilim. Özal, a translator and an editor himself, was sure that the translation that had been published by Agora Publishing House was an, only an edited or slightly changed version of Soul Publications translation. He gave several examples 
which looked suspiciously similar, he called the event only a conversion rather than a translation. In the interview done by Sabri Gürses, Akınhay, the editor, rejected the claim of plagiarism too. According to him, Aydar brought a new interpretation to the book, as uh, he explained in Mesele magazine and Birgün Kitap Supplement. This is a book supplement of a, of a newspaper. Or one of um, Aydar's claims was that they emancipated the work. Uh, works they translated from previous Stalinist distortions. He accused sole publications and the translators of the publishing house of distorting source text with Stalinist purposes. Uh, due to due to ethical and ideological reasons, the, reac the reaction to translation grief so explosively that many critics, including Erdos, the first um, translator and the publisher, uh, himself who was uh, who, who, who was the translator and owner of Soul Publication House because became involved in the uh, debate. Uh, he blamed Ida in a very harsh manner for translating translations, which can be understood as plagiarizing through uh, editing. Ed Erdost, on the other hand, uh, in fact, aware of the uh, aware of that his own translation was facing criticisms, so he defended himself against the claim, claim that publishing house, his, his publishing house, had not corrected the terminological uh, errors in his translation over the years. Uh, this clash between two these two publishing houses seemed to be the reflection of a clash between Stalinist, Stalinist and uh, Trotskyist uh, ideologies. Uh, and their po political followers in Turkish discourse. Moreover, the agency of the first translator, Mihri Belli, was revealed thanks to this debate. Uh, who uh, He was a, an influential figure in the Turkish Communist Party when the book was published. Uh, Agora Publishing House was trying to pro uh, provide Turkish readers with an alternative corpus of leftist works. Uh, the case indicated the need for a direct translation of the book and the necessity to update Marxist terminology. However, conse consecration of the first translation due to iconic status of its translator publisher indicated its difficult difficulty to cope with, uh, indicated it is difficult to cope with a first translation which established its space in a literary in a literary uh, heritage. When it comes to the results and completions of this um, clash, the demands of translations from original source language was revealed. Uh, a re rejuvenation in the translations of le leftist books after 20 years, a reinterpretation and re reiteration phase, um, again after uh, 2000s in Turkish, a new wave of retranslations which has different ideological motives, integrating indirect translations into the scope of retranslations translations, the need to redefine the concept of retranslation as a cluster concept within which retranslation is a hyponym and indirect translation is a hyponym, the futility of limitation of retranslation to only one source language. The clash between the publishing houses and translators can be considered as an indication of a new interpret in interpretation phase and rejuvenation in Turkish uh, Marxist uh, theory. In, in an indirect translation can also be 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 also and get to know that an indirect translation can also establish its space in a, a literary heritage. And there is a crossbreeding between languages as uh, those translations were done from English. Uh, and uh, as the French version uh, was also used. Uh, translation brings a fusion of horizons. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, a quote from Antoine Berman, who, who, which originally belongs to Hans Georg Gadamer. And I ideology that was influential at a historical moment or poetics of an era can come to fore through translations. Indirect translations are ways of opening in the present, just like retranslations. Uh, moreover, diachronic analysis of successive translation is a long-term collective task. Uh, translation criticism contributes to translation history. These are the Concluded, concluding remarks I would like to uh, do and some references. Thank you for your uh, attention.